What is an e-bike battery? Well, it's pretty much like any other battery, be it on your laptop, on your phone, a DSLR camera, or even on a GoPro. In today's video, we're gonna be covering the basics, battery care, and getting the most out of your e-bike battery. Chemistry, let's talk about battery chemistry. Now, there are so many types of battery out there. You've got lead acid, nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride. Now, most e-bike batteries rely on lithium ion batteries. Now, they are good because they are high energy density. Uh, and that means that they can store more energy and they're relatively light. Uh, obviously, there are more different types of lithium ion battery out there if you need to research it, but in general, yeah, we're talking lithium ion super light batteries. Okay, so later on, we're gonna be talking about the nitty gritty of battery care and how to get the most out of your e-bike battery. But first of all, let's talk about some basics. Now, e-bike batteries come in both external and internal or integrated formats. Um, the kind of brands we're talking about are Bros, Shimano, Specialized, Bosch, and Yamaha. Now, um, behind me, I have an integrated system on a Specialized Levo. Uh, an external, for example, would be kind of mounted on the top of that down tube. Uh, but the internal ones are far neater and it's kind of, it's more of a classic kind of mountain bike silhouette. Uh, detaching is pretty simple. You can just undo this bolt on the Specialized and out she comes. So there is your e-bike battery. Now, first up, capacity. Now this is measured in watt hours, not watts. And it's the watt hours that determines how far your e-bike will be able to go. Now we can talk in volts and amps all day long, but it's actually that watt hour number which is really important and which determines how much juice you've got in your tank of your e-bike. Uh, now, if you look at most manufacturers' websites, they will tell you how much capacity is in your e-bike battery. And they range between 300 and 700 watt hours. Now, obviously, the kind of higher that number, the more range you're gonna get from your e-bike. Okay, so why do we need to talk about watt hours? Well, this is a 250 watt motor. And this is a 500 watt hour Bosch battery. Now, if you run this motor at full capacity for two hours, then it's gonna use all your battery. Right, let's make this a little bit more clear. Now, think about this glass of water as your watt hours. Now, that is your potential energy. Now, the energy transfer is when you can dish it out into here. Now, that is now your watts. But it's not as simple as that. Think about someone like Chris Froome who dishes out maybe 350 watts on a one hour ride. He's gonna be kind of trickling that energy like so. However, someone like Andre Greipel, Olympic sprinter, he's gonna be doing maybe 2000 watts over 30 seconds. So he's gonna be chucking it all in the tank like that. Yeah, so in basic terms, the more watt hours you have in your battery, the greater the range you're gonna have in your e-bike. But even then, it's not quite as simple as that. Things such as how much you weigh. Yeah, sorry folks, the, kind of the heavier you are, the more drain you're gonna have on your battery. But there's other things too, things such as the shape of the terrain, the type of the terrain, your cadence. You know, there's a lot of factors that go into how much battery you use on a ride. Now, in terms of the kind of batteries between the different bike brands, uh, let's take this Specialized Levo, for example. Now, it comes with either a 460 watt hour battery or the one in this bike here is a 504 watt hour. So obviously, it comes back to what I mentioned earlier, the 504 watt hour battery is gonna have a kind of longer range than that 460. Uh, now, other bikes such as the Focus, Focus Jam and the Sam, they have a 376 watt hour boat, uh, battery which is located in the down tube. However, you can actually bolt on an extra 376 watt hour battery on the top which gives you a kind of huge range. Uh, other bikes such as the Rocky Mountain Powerplay, they have a 632 watt hour battery and that is located in the down tube too, so there's a great range on that bike. One thing to bear in mind finally is the range of your battery is not linear. So what that means is at the beginning of the ride there's going to be slightly more power than when, it, when you kind of get towards the end of your ride and you're going to one and two bars left on your display. Okay, wait, let's talk about e-bike battery weight. Now, on the whole, they weigh between two to three kilograms. Uh, does weight matter? 
Well, it kind of does and it kind of doesn't. It depends whether you want range of your e-bike or whether you want a kind of lightweight, playful bike. Uh, as it happens, there's a, something out there for everybody. You know, kind of things like the Focus is a 376 watt hour battery is quite light. Whereas something like the Rocky Mountain Powerplay at 632 is quite a heavy battery. However, because they're all mid-drive, the, kind of, the kind of weight distribution is actually quite low. So it's quite a stable ride, irrespective of the kind of battery you choose. Where it does matter is if you choose a bolt-on system, because if you choose one of them, it means you're gonna to have to be carrying your battery in a backpack, which is gonna affect your weight distribution and your center of gravity quite significantly. So how many times can you charge one of these e-bike batteries? Well, roughly between 500 to 1,000 times. Now think about it, if you're charging that battery a thousand times, you're doing 35 miles on each ride, that's like, that's 35,000 miles. And that's a lot of riding. When you kind of bear in mind that maybe your kind of drivetrain is gonna last what? Thousand miles probably? So yeah, huge amount of riding. Now Bosch actually did a test. They kind of recharged one, they discharged and recharged one of these batteries 1,500 times. And it was only then that it was no good to be used anymore. So yeah, that's a kind of, that's a serious amount of range on these e-bike batteries. How quick does it take to charge an e-bike battery? Well, on the whole, about two hours will get you 50% charge on bike, on brands such as Bosch, Specialized, Shimano, Yamaha. Um, but you can get 80% in two hours on a Rocky Mountain power play. Uh, it all depends on brand to brand. Uh, but yeah, like I mentioned earlier, bear in mind whether it's external or internal. If you're gonna take that battery out of the frame, it's gonna take you longer than demounting one which is kind of external. How much do they cost? Between 400 and 800 pounds. So make sure you give your e-bike battery a lot of love because it's gonna cost you a lot to get a replacement. So what about internal or external or integrated? Which one are you gonna choose? Now I actually quite like a lot of external batteries in that the fit is really, really quite neat. Um, however, um, you can't get away from how beautiful an internal integrated battery does look. Um, but you can't make a broad generalization. Just make sure when you check you know, which bike you're buying, there's not any kind of rattling in this down to you between the, between the frame and the battery, because that'll really annoy you. So yeah, depends. Internal and external kind of doesn't make any difference in the performance. It's more of a kind of a visual thing. How waterproof is your e-bike battery? Well, I say it's more a case of water resistant rather than waterproof. Now, it all comes down to the IP code, which is a standard on uh, electrical and mechanical enclosures. The higher the IP code, the more kind of they can, the, your battery can deal with water. Now, this iPhone is uh, actually an IP67 rating, which means you can drop that into a meter of water for 30 minutes and no water will get into it. But that kind of depends on calm conditions. You know, you're not gonna chuck it into a rapids at kind of one meter. You know, it so happens that this Turbo Levo battery is also an IP67. But like I said, this, you know, kind of, it depends on where it is. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of force forcing water into this system. So it's not quite as straightforward as that. And the kind of IP numbers are kind of vary from brand to brand. So maybe kind of check that out on the manufacturer's website. Okay, let's talk about battery care and maintenance. How to get the most out of these quite expensive units. Um, first up, charging. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is gonna depend on whether you've got an internal or external battery. Obviously, you've got an external battery, you can get home, you can pop it out of the bike, take it in the house, stick it on charge, really easy. Whereas if you've got an internal system, that's gonna require a lot more, more complicated procedure to get the battery out, or otherwise you're gonna to have to take the bike into the house to get it charged. Um, whichever way, the key point here is to get into good habits. Uh, as soon as you finish a ride, rather than kind of leave the bike in the garage for it to discharge, get it on charge and make sure that at least there's something in the tank where it's between 30 or 60% charge, because that will prolong the life of your e-bike battery. On the subject of good habits, now as you can see, I've taken this Bosch unit out of a high bike and there's a bit of mud gut in the system here. Um, but pressure washing is a definite no-no for e-bike batteries. It's kind of more of a bucket and sponge approach and a kind of wet rag to kind of clean it down. And after that, kind of lightly grease the ports and contact points on the bike. Yeah, so pressure washing, no-no on e-bike batteries. Um, in terms of temperature, now it is worth keeping your bike indoors in sub-zero conditions before mounting it onto the battery 
uh, before going out on a bike ride. So yeah, temperatures, gonna avoid extremes, kind of room temperature, cool is the best. <laughs> Okay, so that's an overview of kind of some of the general things surrounding e-bike batteries. Now let's have a quick look at some of the detail of each battery system. Okay, let's start off with Bosch. Uh, now, some of the key facts of Bosch, you, they comes in both internal and external variations. Uh, High Bike and Moustache are some of the main brands to use that along with Lapierre. Uh, weight for a Bosch battery is about 2.6 kilograms in the whole and the capacity between 300 and 500 watt hours. Uh, how quick do they charge? Like I mentioned earlier, 50% after two hours and 100% after four and a half hours. Uh, the price on a Bosch battery varies between about £350 for a 300 watt hour battery and up to 575 for the larger 504 watt hour. Now, Bros was a brand that uh, we saw on a Fantic bike uh, quite recently. Uh, key facts is uh, you can have, get them in both internal and external, for example, the Fantic or also the German built Rottweiler bike. Uh, battery weight around about 3.4 kilos, depending on the brand, uh, and so too the capacity from 400 watt hours to 770. It's a huge, huge battery on that Bro system. Uh, how quick they depend, how quick they charge, obviously depends on the size of the battery. And the cost, well, a BZ on the Fantic is about 630 watts and 899 pounds. Rocky Mountain have got a great kind of powerful system. They've got like a 632 watt hour battery. They also do a 502. Uh, the weight is 2.8 kilos, but um, the fact that it's internal, it's quite a complicated procedure to get that battery out if you want to kind of clean it. However, you know, in terms of charging, it's done on the bike. Uh, as mentioned earlier, I can get 80% charge after two hours, and the cost is about £850 for a 632 watt hour battery. Now, Shimano do both internal and external batteries. Uh, weight about 2.65 kilos, capacity 504 watt hours. Again, kind of 80% charge after two and a half hours, and 100% after five hours. Now, um, the cost depends whether it's an integrated system or external. The integrated is about £650 for a spare battery, whereas external is £480. Specialised, as mentioned earlier, come in 460 or 504 watt hours. Uh, the price is about £700, and of course, uh, as you can see on the bike, it's an internal system, but it's very easy to kind of dismount that battery. Uh, Yamaha is a 3 kilo battery and 500 watt hours, and you get 100% charge after four and a half hours. Uh, again, it's quite an expensive unit at £849. So there's an overview of kind of different batteries, different kind of systems and a bit of battery care. But let's get out in the field to see how you can get the most out of these e-bike batteries. We all want more range out of our batteries, but it largely depends on the length of the ride, the shape of the terrain, and your attitude to the ride that dictates how much battery you use. This then is a short guide on getting the most out of your battery. Before you head out, it's worth bearing in mind the nature of the ride that you're going on. It could be an eight hour adventure in the mountains or it could simply be a one hour rampage of the local downhill tracks. Obviously the former, you're gonna to have to be quite careful with your battery. Whereas on the latter, those downhill runs, maybe the only way of doing it is using maximum power. The mode button. Now this is one of the simplest ways of managing the power on your bike. On flat transfer stages, you simply don't need to use anything other than eco or trail mode. Now a lot of the time, it's just a mindset. Really try and focus on getting tuned in to the mode on your bike and make sure that it's your heart and it's your legs that are in control, not the motor. On downhill sections, you should really turn the motor off or use eco. Just learn to get the flow of the terrain. Remember that if you feel you're slacking, you can pedal above the level of assistance and get a really good interval workout. And by doing that, you're gonna save a ton of battery on the flat and quite boring stages. The mode button then, it can be the friend or the enemy of battery life. 
Just remember that on longer rides, your motor should be on simmer rather than boil. And when it comes to that turbo, you should only really be using that on super tech or super steep rides, or indeed if you're new to mountain biking. The relationship between cadence and gearing is critical. Now this is a high cadence and this is low cadence. Working out this relationship between rider, rider weight, cadence and gearing is an art. Hit the sweet spot and you will be on your way to getting the very best in whatever mode you ride in. Be smooth, bear in mind that on climbing, you really need to keep the back wheel on the deck with no spinning. What you really need to try and avoid when you're riding your e-bike uphill is these mini collisions, these battles that you can get involved in. Each one, especially when this back wheel is spinning, is gonna take away precious energy from the motor. The secret here is smooth lines, avoiding the collisions, the line of least resistance. Now where you ride is also going to have a small effect on battery life too. A single track which is sheltered by big trees is going to have less of a drain on the battery than a big wide fire road open to the winds. But remember, it's the shape of the terrain that's going to have the biggest bearing on how much battery you use. Riding in those big mountains is going to need far more battery than some lowland single track. Flow, this is a massive subject. It's all about using the shape of the ground to generate drive, pumping, using the downslopes, learn out the gap sections of rock and root to avoid those collisions. So flow, it's a classic way of pedaling less and it's a win-win. Learn these good techniques and you're gonna be using less battery. Whoa, so, you've been out hammering the trails all morning. Now what better than having a mid-ride battery charge? Now most of these batteries charge maximum in two hours, so one hour is gonna have a big effect on it. So that's the great thing about e-bikes, is the ride could be a lot more intense. So you'll find yourself chatting more after the ride than during the ride, and that's the key thing. Thanks for watching this video. I mean, we love getting into the kind of battery and motor geekery on these e-bikes. Uh, if you want to see a motor fundamentals, click up here. Uh, please don't forget to give us the thumbs up and also to subscribe.